Okay, so I guess we can get started. Um, I just want to first say uh, thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Samantha. I am one of the teen librarians here at the Levittown Public Library. Um, and I wanted to just say thank you to um, Adelphi and to Nassau Community College for joining us this evening so we can talk about the admission process um, and especially with some of the changes that may have come up during this whole COVID-19 situation. Um, so we're going to kind of just do a little bit of a presentation style um, and then you know I welcome questions and answers. If you have any questions during the presentation um, I'm going to keep everybody on mute, but please feel free to send any questions you have in the chat. Um, if there's something that you would like us to stop and discuss, um, that is perfectly fine. We will be recording this program, so you'll be able to view it on our website um, if you would like to come back to the program or if you have anybody else who you know might be interested in the information, we welcome um, you know, sharing the information out. Uh, and also, in addition, um, if you need anything, uh, have any technical problems, you can also put that in the chat as well. I'll be monitoring so this way I can help you out in any way that I can. Um, so with that said, uh, I guess we will start with Michael from Adelphi. Um, and if you'd like to introduce yourself and just kind of uh, tell us about the admission process. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm going to start sharing my screen here. I hope you all can see that. So my name is Michael Cartusiello. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions at Adelphi University. And I have been, this is my sixth college recruitment cycle. So I've been doing this for a little bit now. Um, I have been working with students from all different populations from first years to the transfer process um, and students from all over the country, actually. So I've definitely gotten a good feel of kind of what this process is like for all of you, even though it's been a little bit, a little while for me. Um, and I'm excited to talk to you all about Adelphi today, talk about our college process, and also go into a little bit the search process. Um, so starting off, you know, your journey starts here. Um, we like to think at Adelphi University, we are extremely student focused. And kind of with the theme of your journey, I want to remind you all that the college process is about you. Um, yes, a lot of things are changing right now. Uh, we are in a very different landscape than we've ever imagined, but we still need to all think about kind of what's best for us and what is it that we want to get out of this process, what we want to get out of this college experience. And it will be up to you to kind of do some research on what schools are the right fit for you. So, in regards to Adelphi, uh, some fast facts here. We have about 5,000 undergraduates. Uh, so we're technically a medium-sized institution. And that's something you wanna think about. How big of a school do you wanna to go to? Do you wanna to go to a really large school with 20, 30,000 students? Do you wanna to go to a really small school with a couple hundred students or somewhere in between? Um, the other thing that you'll find are, are the types of class sizes you encounter. So in high school, for the most part, back when you were in the classroom, you probably weren't seeing classes larger than maybe 34, 35. That might be a particularly large class, probably a little smaller. Um, there are certainly schools like Adelphi who keep the classes that small. Uh, we have a genuine average class size of 21 students, and you won't find yourself in a large lecture hall. Now, there are certainly some learners who would actually prefer the large lecture hall, who like being able to read the textbook on their own and kind of following through and just being there and listening to the lectures. It's all about the type of learner that you are. Um, but again, looking into those facts of the types of colleges you're looking at, uh, those are things to take note of. Uh, Adelphi is really proud of our 10 to 1 student faculty ratio. Uh, we really ensure that the largest class you'll find on campus is 50 students and that's it. Um, we try and max it out at 35, emphasizing that student faculty ratio so that the professors will know your name. Uh, you'll feel comfortable uh, at answer, asking questions and being called on to answer questions in class and to really participate too. Um, we also have a wide variety of students. You can see the diversity that we offer. We also have a wide variety of students from different states, different countries. So you'll meet different types of people from all over the world. And we have a very involved student body. I'll kind of come back to that later, but two out of every three students are participating in some form of club or organization. 
uh, which is huge. College is not just that academic component. You're going to want that community feel. So maybe you want to ask those questions when you're looking into schools. What do I want to get involved in? Uh, what type of community am I looking for? And ultimately, one of my favorite statistics to talk about uh, is this one down here, that 95% of our students have jobs or are in grad school within six months of graduation. And that's huge. Ultimately, you are going to go to college to pursue a career, to take that next step in, in your life. And you want to make sure that you're going to get the results that you invest in. So another thing about Adelphi is that we have over 50 different academic majors. Now there are some schools with over 200 majors. There are some schools with only about five or 10. So that's something that's gonna come into play too. What is it that you wanna study? Uh, we have the College of Arts and Sciences, which houses our widest variety of majors, things from biology, chemistry, sociology, to performing and visual arts, uh, computer science. We also have a College of Education and health sciences for our education program, but also physical pre-physical therapy type classes, exercise science, and other health areas. Uh, we have a really strong college of nursing and public health. If any of you have heard of Adelphi, you may also have heard of Adelphi's nursing program. It's a really, really strong program and kind of focusing on that public health aspect as well. Um, we have a whole school for psychology. We have a whole school for social work, and we have a school of business where you could study you know, anything from marketing and management to economics, finance, or accounting, or do something called business undecided. Um, I think Adelphi really specializes on that student who has a variety of interests, someone who may not be sure yet of what they want to study, or someone who wants to do two different fields. It is really easy to double major here or have a major minor combo that will get you really diversify your education and diversify your resume as you're going out into the workforce. And that's something you can think about as well. Do you know exactly what you want to be doing when you grow up, if you will, or are you not really sure? And do you want to explore a couple different fields? And that can help you narrow down the search option as well. Uh, so we also have a bunch of different signature programs. Uh, we have an honors college and a Leavenworth Global Scholars program. It is for both are for high achieving students. Our honors college tends to be more humanities based, whereas Global Scholars is particular for students who are passionate about social justice, civic engagement, and community action. Um, both are gonna really enhance your curriculum here and you can be any major within these programs. And it really helps uh, you, again, round out that curriculum. Um, we also have something called general education requirements. It's the small core curriculum that every student kind of has to satisfy to get a degree at Adelphi, uh, but the Honors College or Global Scholars would replace your core curriculum and give you a more concentrated version in an area that hopefully you're really interested in. Um, we also have four plus one programs. So this is another great way to really think about your career and kind of prioritize the college process. So some fields you really benefit from not only having a bachelor's degree, which is the four-year degree, but a master's degree as well. And that's typically two years after the bachelor's degree. So a four plus one will give you a bachelor's and a master's in five. So we have these programs in social work, in computer science, in business, in, uh, in education. We have a the program we call STEP, the Scholar Teacher Education Program, that's really big to get your master's degree in five years as well as psychology and a few others. Uh, we're also really well known for some support programs. There are many students who have accommodations in their class now, uh, and our student access office actually helps provide those accommodations for students uh, at no additional cost other than just general tuition at Adelphi. Uh, separately, for students on the autism spectrum, we have a Bridges to Adelphi program, and for students with diagnosed language-based learning disabilities, there's a learning resource program. Both of these are fee-for-service programs that do provide a much higher level of support, uh, but for some students, they actually need a lot of extra support at just working through their learning difference, and it has a really big help, and, and there's a high success rate there as well. So we also have something called joint degree programs. These are other colleges we actually partner with for additional degrees beyond bachelor's degrees. Um, one of the best examples is explaining to students who wanna become a doctor, you need your bachelor's degree first, followed by your medical degree. Uh, so it usually ends up being 
eight years of schooling, sometimes even more, depending on if you want to specialize. And with the benefit of these joint degree programs is rather than having to apply again after finishing college, we have these programs that we partner with where for a lot of them, you actually can know that you would be accepted once you're accepted as a first year student to Adelphi. Some others, uh, they work with a track. So even if you don't want to go to SUNY Upstate for medicine, you can still be on a pre-med track at Adelphi and then apply to the medical school of your choice or say the law school of your choice. And what this does is it helps you uh, have some, someone in your corner while you're handling sometimes difficult requirements to apply to an even higher degree. And it's just nice, again, to have advisement here and that. So Panther Life, uh, as I mentioned earlier, two out of every three students at Adelphi is involved in some form of club organization. Um, we have over 80 active clubs on campus, so it's a really, really vibrant community. And we are you know, located right outside of New York City. We're on Garden City, Long Island. Uh, this does allow for a great community and access to New York City for internships, for social events. Uh, but then separately, we do have this gorgeous campus feel. Um, we actually are open and I'll go over some visit opportunities later as well. And you're welcome to come walk around campus when you can to see that typical college feel. And something you want to think about with regard to location is, do you want a suburban campus? Do you want a city campus? Do you want an isolated campus? Do you want to be close to home? Do you want to be far away from home? Uh, we do have seven different residence halls as well. Um, you can live on campus here. Uh, given everything that's going on though, you may not want to live on campus. You may want to go to a college that's nearby that still has that campus uh, home away from home feel. Or you may want to get out of your house and go far away to college and that's okay too. These are the types of things you wanna consider. Uh, looking for a community, looking for how close or far away the school is to a city, what there is to do on the weekends, what there is to do on campus. So the other kind of main reason we've all gathered here today is to go over that application process. So should you want to apply to Adelphi, um, we will need absolutely a completed application. There are two options for applying to Adelphi. You can use our Adelphi application, which you'll find on our website. You go to adelphi.edu, click the apply now button, um, or you can use the common application. Um, I always end the Common App. Um, the Common App is really easy for students when you tend to, if you're planning to apply to a lot of schools and they're all on the Common App, it's gonna save you time and, and sometimes a headache where you're having to fill out a lot of the same questions. Um, whereas if you're only applying to a small handful of schools, you may want to just do the shorter, more direct application on their individual website. Um, something else I'd like to point out is that it definitely includes an essay, um, your standard college essay is fine. That's, those are the prompts that are on the Common App. We have similar prompts on our website for an essay or a personal statement, uh, but happy to provide some tips on how to really express yourself in that essay. Um, this is really your chance to let us know who you are. Um, it's hard to fit yourself in 15 pages, you know, or, or a little more, a little less sometimes. and. Um, there's certainly a lot we want to get to know about you, but in that essay, it's you speaking authentically. You are telling the reader something that they may not be able to learn from just reading your transcript or just reading your application. Um, I know that can sound kind of scary because it's a, almost an, a very open-ended topic. There's really nothing you can't write about um, and you really could write about anything. Uh, what we like to see is the ability for the applicant to, to show us how they've grown or, or how they've learned something that's really important to them. Um, you don't have to be the most unique and original and exciting story. It can be a really, really ordinary thing. Um, I read one of the best essays I ever read was written by a student who wrote about how important it is to her to have dinner with her family at the kitchen table every, every day. 
um, that everybody has different schedules, but when they all come together to have dinner and talk about their day, she's just learned how much that time has meant to her to really bond with her family. Uh, there was a prompt a long time ago on the Common App that asked students to describe their bedroom. Um, and a lot of students unfortunately fell into that trap of kind of just literally describing their bedroom and talking about, um, this was several years ago, so it was, you know, Justin Bieber posters on the wall and the furry pink rugs and just very superficial describe their bedroom. Uh, but then separately, I also read a really great essay from this prompt about a student who he was um, the oldest of five children. Uh, his mom was a single mom and he was fortunate enough to have his own small bedroom. And in describing his room, he also talked about how that was his one place to be himself and to be engrossed in books. Uh, and we got to learn so much about him just in describing his bedroom. So there are lots of really cool things you can do with this essay without having to tell us about a really cool trip to Costa Rica or the service trip you took to New Orleans um, or the one great adventure you had. It doesn't have to be a crazy adventure, although sometimes they can be great essays. Um, it, it's just something that's important to you. Uh, definitely make sure you proofread though I can't tell you how many times there are very simple mistakes that just get missed because you need someone else to take a look at it. Um, anyone else just to read for content, read for, for simple errors, um, and definitely don't mention um, the name of the school in your essay unless you're writing a supplemental essay where they're asking you, you know, why, why uh, Rutgers, why Malloy, why Farmingdale? Um, if they're asking you that, sure, but I, I can tell you Adelphi doesn't, uh, most schools don't, and in your general essay you don't want to do that, especially if you're applying via the Common App where that same essay is going to multiple schools. I've read a lot of essays that were really wonderful and ended with, and that's why I want to go to Sacred Heart. Um, you know, we're not Sacred Heart, so not really a good look if that's what you're gonna end up putting in your essay and it gets sent to the wrong school. It happens very, very often. So this is not one of our direct requirements, but I always recommend either including a resume or if you are filling out the common application, there's an activity section. And I really, really recommend that you add activities to it. Tell us about what you are doing in your school, outside of the classroom, if you're in clubs, Tell us about the responsibilities you have at home. Tell us what you're doing in your community. Uh, tell us if you have a part-time job. We love, that's my favorite part of any application that I read. I feel like I get to know so much more about you because you know, everyone who applies to us is a student or was a student at some point. Uh, we're seeing transcripts, we're seeing rec letters, but what you have on your resume is where you can really vary from the next applicant. Uh, and we love to see your interests that way. And it also shows really great time management skills if you're able to utilize a lot of different responsibilities and be involved in a lot of different things. So we also require a high school transcript. Um, for us, we are looking at your cumulative GPA through the end of your junior year. So if you're now a rising senior or starting your senior year, um, as you can see on this slide here, we have some deadlines. By the time you're gonna be applying, your senior grades aren't available. So we're looking at your cumulative GPA. Uh, for us, we see an average GPA of 3.5. Um, for us, that means it's an 88 out of a 100 uh, or a little bit over a B plus. Doesn't mean you have to have the 3.5, that's the middle. Uh, we certainly look at a range and that's something else you want to think about when applying to colleges, kind of what the average range is and if your academic criteria falls within that. Um, you're not just that one number though, I, I promise. We are looking at how you've grown, so we'll look at grade trend if you've either stayed consistently strong or improved from freshman to sophomore to junior year of high school. Um, we also look at your core subject GPAs, so if you still do just as well, but your, if your grades are a little below our average, but you're still doing just as well in your core subjects like math, English, science, and history, that's really, really strong for us. We want to know that you're a good academic student um, and not always just 
inflated grades from, say, an elective course. Um, now, this year, for the first time, we are officially test optional, and we're really excited about it. Um, what that means is you are welcome to apply and submit either SAT or ACT scores, or both, because we will super score and find an equivalency and only look at what's higher. But we are now not requiring it, and we will review your application without test scores. Um, that's definitely a good question to ask colleges that you're interested in applying to, kind of where their application process is at in regards to test scores and being test optional. And additionally, and I'll touch more on scholarships on the next slide, but some schools who are test optional, you, you in order to qualify for certain scholarships, you actually do need test scores. But at Delphi, you won't need that. You're gonna be able to go qualify for the exact same amount of scholarship with or without test scores. Uh, definitely something to think about uh, in terms of asking for some of that average criteria ahead of, ahead of time to get an idea of where you fall and if you might be better off not submitting your test scores. So what we've seen in the past is an average SAT score of 1160 or an average ACT score of 24. Um, last on the application requirements for Adelphi, we do require a recommendation letter. We actually only require one, but you're welcome to send more than one, a lot of students do. My recommendation to you is if you're gonna send two or three, don't send two math teachers and a science teacher. Um, try and send maybe an English teacher and a math teacher and then a guidance counselor or a, any teacher, a guidance counselor and a coach uh, or your part-time job supervisor. People who can speak about different aspects of you, maybe someone in the classroom, someone outside the classroom, someone at your job, um, someone from home, it, it depends really on, on kind of giving a more well-rounded picture and what it is you're involved in and can play to your strengths. Um, so with deadlines, Adelphi is rolling admissions. What that means is we are constantly accepting applications. And once we start the review period for an academic year, uh, for, for us, we usually start the review period in October. Um, we promise a four week turnaround with that decision. So we start releasing decisions usually around Thanksgiving. Um, if you apply to us by November 15th, you're gonna get a decision by December 15th. Um, we have an early action deadline as well. Early action is as long as you apply by a certain deadline, you are guaranteed a decision from us. Uh, by a different deadline. So for us, it's December 1st. You are guaranteed that decision by December 31st if you apply early action. Um, but again, since we're also rolling admissions, you'll get your decision even if you apply by January 1st, you'll get that decision by February 1st. Um, for some of those joint degree programs I mentioned, we have uh, a deadline to apply, which is February 1st. Um, we recommend just for regular rolling admissions um, a March 1st deadline, uh, but again, we do accept applications after that. Something to keep in mind though is May 1st. Um, while that's no longer as hard of a deadline, it's still something that is very, very strongly encouraged by all colleges across the country. Uh, we really encourage you to make that decision of where you're going to go to school the following year by May 1st. Um, and we get that it's a stressful decision. That's why it's really, helpful for you to apply early action, to apply earlier on in that rolling admissions process, to make sure that you're getting information from us early. If you get your decision from us by February, you'll also be getting scholarship information by February and likely financial aid information as well by February. And so that gives you all of February, all of March, and all of April to visit the schools, talk with financial aid offices, chat with professors, uh, ask any burning questions you may have while you're trying to make that potentially difficult decision. So affording Adelphi. Um, Adelphi, despite being a private school, is actually very affordable. Um, tuition this year is $41,000 a year, uh, but you are automatically considered for scholarships when applying to Adelphi, and our scholarships range from ten dollars to $28,000 a year. Uh, so doing well in school can definitely help make the cost of tuition here a lot lower for you. 
Um, we also, of course, we have the FAFSA and we have a, uh, you can fill out the FAFSA, you have financial aid consideration from us. And if you use our net price calculator, which is on our website, it can kind of help give you an estimate of what you may qualify for. And financial aid will also help you bring the cost of tuition down. Um, and I always really like to point out that 94.6% of our full-time undergraduates were receiving some kind of financial aid whether that's grants or loans from the government or scholarships, but likely both. Um, and honestly, 87% of our undergraduates were receiving scholarships. So most of our students are not paying full tuition here. Uh, we like to highlight that we're in the process of renovating our campus and actually expanding our university center. Um, this is the Center for Student Life here, again, talking about that community, showing that we're really investing in the culture we have on campus, that there's going to be outdoor amphitheater seating, a brand new food court, a brand new franchise Starbucks, which I'm personally really excited about, brand new club meeting spaces and some classroom space as well. Um, looking into schools like that, that are growing, that have construction, it's a really good sign, especially now. So there are plenty of ways to engage with our school still. These are definitely things you should look out for during your search and application process as well. You can check if schools are offering virtual tours if you're not comfortable going in person. Um, also, if you do wanna go in person, if there are maybe self-guided tours or one-on-one -on -one tour options to keep socially distant while still exploring campus. Um, we do have virtual open houses as well, uh, and plenty of ways to connect with an admissions counselor to ask questions one-on-one -on -one, uh, and really get an idea of kind of where you fall in the ad admissions process. So we like to take a second to kind of talk about where we usually sit in rankings as well, but the truth is the most important ranking and the one we really care about the most is, is yours. Uh, we really want to make sure that should you come to Adelphi, it's because you feel like it's the best fit for you. Uh, and typically we would start talking about questions, but um, just quickly how you can engage with us. I'll certainly be asking questions later, but I know I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague from Nassau. How are you? Okay. So my name is Jill Fanuzzi. I am the Associate Director of Admissions at Nassau Community College. Um, I have been at Nassau for 32 years, um, working in the admissions office, um, going out into the high schools and talking to the students um, about Nassau Community College. Um, Nassau, which some students uh, don't realize, is actually part of the State University of New York, the SUNY system. Uh, we are Nassau County's uh, community college. So basically, we are working for you. Um, we're located right behind um, the Nassau Coliseum, not far from Hofstra, not far from Adelphi also. Um, and currently, we have about 17,000 students, not on our campus right now, but um, going to school with us um, on a regular year. We have students that are on campus. We have online courses. Um, and this year, we are, uh, we are about 85% virtual at this point with some of our lab classes on campus. Um, there's a lot of different reasons why students may choose to attend a two-year school. Um, NASA, we offer four different types of either certificates or degrees. We have um, certificate programs. We have AAS programs, which are uh, what we consider terminal degrees. Students come and they go out into the workforce. We also have associate's degrees uh, associates of Arts and Associates of Science, and those are generally for students who are looking to transfer on to a four-year school. So knowing that, let's go back to why a student may decide that they want to, to go to a four-year school, uh, two-year school first. So some students are unsure of what they want to major in, or they, um, they kind of have an idea, but they want to try some courses. Uh, so we get a lot of students who will um, who will come to us 
for a semester, for a year, for the full two years, just to try some classes out to see how they like them. Um, we have some students who are looking for very specific programs with us. For example, we have a mortuary science program where um, it's a two-year degree. Um, it is considered a, a terminal degree. The student gets the degree and then goes out into the workforce. Um, we have many students who um, who are concerned about taking out loans and things like that. So they decide that they want to go uh, to NASA first because they are um, it, they find it a, a little bit more affordable. Um, and an awesome thing, and a lot of our students um, go on to Adelphi, is that many of our area schools give our students scholarship money for uh, transferring to them. So for example, if a student maybe didn't work that has very specific requirements to get into that program, um, and they, um, they do very well and transfer on to additional honor, honors programs at the four-year schools. Uh, we have many students who come to us uh, for our nursing program. Uh, our nursing program is a two-year program, and then the students go on um, to Empire State College, and they continue and they complete their four-year degree through them. Um, we have on campus, um, our students are in classes with the average class size of about 24. Uh, we don't have stadium classes. That is not our philosophy and that's not how our professors like to teach. So the classes are fairly small, probably similar to what you are, um, what you're in in the high school. Um, we have over 70 different majors on our campus. Uh, everything from the allied health sciences like radiologic tech and physical therapy assistant, um, the nursing program. Uh, we have programs in hotel and restaurant management, in communications, um, TV, radio broadcasting. We have our, and we, we even have our own uh, radio station on campus. Um, there are programs in the business areas. Um, and we also have a, a very large program in liberal arts and sciences. And for those students who are maybe unsure of what they want to do um, or what they want to major in, um, many of them will come in under liberal arts and sciences. Um, the great thing about liberal arts and sciences is there's 18 credits of free electives. So the student can decide or, or to try a hotel and restaurant management class to see if they like it. If they don't and they decide to change their program to economics, the hotel class will still count as a general elective uh, for graduation. Um, on campus, we have uh, many different clubs and activities for students to get involved with. Um, being a community college and not having housing on campus, um, I always tell students, when you go to a community college, what you're putting into it is what you're getting out of it. So for students who, and, and we do have them on campus, um, who will come to campus, they'll take a class, they'll go back to their car and maybe eat lunch in the car and then they go back to another class. Um, they're getting out of the college experience what they're putting into it. Um, but most of our students really like to get involved. So if we have, um, we have students um, that will come to campus, they'll go to the food court, they'll go to Starbucks, they'll go um, to our, our um, clubs and activities area, and they'll um, get involved. Those are the students um, who you'll find on our campus all day long. Uh, many of them have jobs on campus also, uh, so they get very involved. Uh, we have a club for every major. We we have a very robust program in intramural sports. We have an Olympic size swimming pool on our campus. We have a weight room, we have a dance room, and the students are getting involved there also. Um, for those students who would like to get involved with intercollegiate sports, um, we are nationally recognized in, um, in cheer, in football, in lacrosse. Um, we have an excellent and, and uh, tennis program um, and we have uh, a nationally recognized uh, wrestling program also. So many of our students do get involved. Uh, we are in division three in the, in the uh, junior division. Um, we are um, 
highly recruited for our athletes for Division I schools. So if a student aspires to go Division I and maybe they're not ready academically, uh, the students can come to us and, and they are being recruited right from our campus. Um, as far as um, support on campus, um, which I think is very important. Um, we do have psychological counseling on our campus for students who need it. We have transfer counseling, which is very important since um, many, many students will go on to a four-year school. So they have transfer counselors available to help you. We even have batteries of tests that students can take, and then they can um, maybe point them in a direction that they've never even thought of. Um, we have um, we have support services for students with disabilities, whether it be physical, emotional, or um, learning disabilities. That program is called the, uh, the Center for Students with Disabilities. They are um, they have their own counselors available to students. Um, it is where uh, the students will go with any um, issues that they may be having with class. It's where the students go to be tested um, outside of the classroom if that's one of their um, one of their uh, accommodations. Uh, it is a, an, a we encourage students who are. Um, who are looking for support services to apply early so that um, we can get all the psychological data and we can um, get you your accommodations letter um, as early as possible. Um, the application process, like I said, is a little bit more streamlined. So um, students would apply using our online application, which can be found on our website. Um, we require um, the student to get us a high school transcript. Um, and uh, any college transcripts if they've attended um, another college prior to Nassau or if they're taking uh, college courses in high school. Um, we do not require SATs or ACTs. They are, um, they are optional for us at all times, and, but students can use those tests uh, for possible exemption from our placement exam. Um, our placement exam is in reading, math, and English. Um, many of our students have to take one or more parts of that test. Uh, students can be exempt based upon their overall grade point average, which is starting this coming semester. They can be exempt based on um, SATs, ACTs, um, AP scores, um, and, I, and IB scores if the students are in an IB program. Um, all, of those, um, all of those ways the student can be exempt from testing. If they do need testing, it's in reading, math, and English. Um, normally, the students would come onto campus and they would take the test um, right on our campus. Uh, students um, were taking the placement test this year uh, virtually. Um, and at the end, they brought them on campus when we opened up a little bit more. So um, we will let you know after after the application is in and we have your high school transcript if you'll still need testing. Um, I always tell everyone that um, we are enrolling admissions, um, but our placement testing generally doesn't start until after the new year. So some students um, are great and they apply early, which we encourage. A lot of students don't think that they need to apply to the community colleges as early as they need to apply to the four-year schools. And actually, you really, you really should. Um, the application process is a, a lot smoother for the students if we have an application in early. But um, some of the students who apply in October and November um, are concerned that they haven't been placement tested. So um, we like to let the students know that if you don't hear from us prior, you will hear from us right after the new year about placement testing if you need it. Um, all of our students are um, have access to a portal. So once you apply, um, you'll be able to check the status of your application. You'll be able to see what class it, um, what uh, documents may be missing from your application um, all through the portal. We also have a requirements chart. Um, every one of our majors, um, well, not everyone, but a lot of our, our majors have different requirements. So for example, if you want to be a business uh, requirements and additional testing um, 
for example, nursing and radiologic tech need the TEAS exam. Um, so all of those requirements for each of the different programs are in the requirements chart and that can be found on our application um, and on our website if you search requirements chart. So if you know what you want to major in, if you want to major in criminal justice, for example, you um, can look on the requirements chart and see that they're looking for a 75 average or better to get into that program. Um, currently, uh, we are about $6,000 per year. Um, one of the other reasons why a lot of the students are, are deciding to come to a two-year school first. Um, and we are working uh, with financial aid. Obviously, if a student is interested in applying, they would do that, and, um, and that would be reflected in their bill. Um, I believe it's 87% of our students have some type of financial aid um, when they're going to school. Um, I am happy to take any questions uh, if anybody has any additional questions. Can NASA use the common uh, application as well? We do not use the common application and we do not use the SUNY application. NASA Community College has our own application which can be found on the website um, at ncc.edu. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Also feel free to uh, type if you have any additional questions, you can type them in the uh, chat if you don't feel like uh, saying them out loud, but you're more than welcome to say them out loud. Um, I know some of the, if you guys don't mind, I'll, uh, some of the questions that have come up uh, numerous times from some of our teens um, was, I know one thing that I always get asked is how can I make my uh, application stand out? Is there any suggestions or tips that you would suggest for anybody who would be applying? I would bring it back really to um, kind of that resume uh, and your essay. Um, that Those are some of the places where it's really gonna show off how you are uniquely you. And another thing um, is talk to your admissions counselors. Uh, it's not you know, going to change too much, uh, but it is our job to help you. And I am so much more likely to remember a student that I've met with once I then later read their application, um, if you've you know expressed interest or said hello. Right, and some of our pro I'm sorry. Some of our programs do require um, essays, and some of them require um, recommendations. Um, I loved Michael's suggestion about getting a different type of of uh, recommendation. Don't get all of the same, don't get all of the same teacher recommendations. Um, and as far as the essays are concerned, um, I, I like to say, you know, catch me. Catch me in the first line. Um, make it something that um, you want to read more. Um, you know, instead of saying, I went to, you know, the mountains to do this, say, I saw a glorious sky and I didn't know what to do with it. And then I'm like, well, you know, let's find out what what the student has to say. Give me a good catch line, a good first sentence to catch my attention. Awesome. Um, and then uh, another question that I get asked a lot is, um, how can I tell if a school is a good fit for me? Um, so I know a lot of people, you know, look at class sizes and look at um, financial uh, situations, but is there anything else that you would suggest um, that they should be looking for when researching, you know, their college choices? Can I first say, I, everyone, and it's so difficult now, you need to visit the schools. Mm -hmm. You don't really know, everything looks great on paper, um, but every campus has its own feel. Every campus has its own vibe, I like to say. So when you, um, when you visit a campus, you can tell if you might be happy there. Um, I always... I, I talked when my daughter was looking at colleges, she walked on a campus and she said, Oh, look, they look just like me. And it was, you know, it, she felt at home there. And that's, you're only going to get that if you can visit campus. And I know we're living in a difficult time right now, but um, if you can do, I mean, Adelphi offers the the one-on-one, -on -one, that's awesome. Um, we haven't just made a decision at this point as how we're doing tours, um, that will come up in the next 
week and it will be on our website. I couldn't agree more. I say the same thing every time too. Um, we both just gave a whole bunch of really great information about our schools, yet really you need to kind of put that only in the back of your head and show up to campus and trust your gut, uh, which sounds weird, but you, you don't know until you get that gut feeling of yes or no. Um, there are a lot of ways to make this on-campus feeling, you know, or just feel out the on-campus virtually. Um, a lot of schools are offering some form of a virtual tour. Uh, it can help, uh, especially if it's actually showing you enough pictures and you're moving around. Um, but there are usually opportunities to talk to current students in some capacity, talk to them. Ask them really regular questions. Um, that's another way to kind of see if you relate to those people who are currently there. And if you do, then it probably is a good fit for you because if they like it there, then you likely will also. If you're not finding you relate to the students, and it might not be a good fit for you. And most of the students have <laughs> access to Naviance. And, and a lot of, it has some great information for the students. And, and sometimes it's not only fit socially, it's fit academically. You wanna make sure that, you wanna make sure that you're, you fit and you're comfortable, comfortable there. So in, Navi, in the Naviance program, they can tell you the students that applied to the school last year and whether they were successful in getting in. So you can get a good idea. If everyone got into a school and they had a 95 average and above and you have a 75 average, maybe that's not the school that you should be applying to. Um, but if there's some great information and, and use your guidance counselors. A lot of these guidance counselors have been to the schools and, and talked to admissions counselors and talked to students. Um, maybe you had a friend last year who went to a school that you're looking at. Talk to them, see how they like it. They asked a lot about the importance of diversifying their applications um, or how important the activities and clubs um, are as far as their applications go. Uh, a lot of teens will tell me sometimes that they're really good in math and science, but not so good in other areas. Um, so I was just wondering if you could offer some tips, suggestions, you know, as far as that part of the application process goes. Sure. Um, I like to talk about balance. Um, Academically first, you know, we don't expect you to have all APs or all advanced or all honors classes. Um, if you, if English is not your strong suit, don't take AP English, take your, take your AP statistics, take your AP calculus or keep challenging yourself. I think the opposite though, and the way to balance that out is don't not taking, I think English is a requirement, so it's a bad end bad example, but um, let's say you're not a good, good at languages. Maybe don't take advanced Spanish, but don't give up on Spanish either, uh, or don't give up on the extra science elective. Um, showing us that you're still balancing it and taking some particularly challenging classes and then some regular classes is really, really healthy, and that's what we're actually looking at. Uh, and same thing with activities. You know, if you're just gonna try and join as many clubs as possible in the end, just to make it look like you have a great resume, we'll see that because we'll kind of see how long you're doing those clubs. Um, if you try a couple new activities and you don't like them, that's fine. Um, but I think it's more, again, showing us how you balance your schedule outside of the classroom. Maybe you're heavily, heavily involved and only that's fantastic. You don't need to add three more positions. Or maybe you have one club and a part-time job. Again, same thing. You don't need to go try and get a whole bunch of other clubs just to diversify that. We just want to know kind of what you're doing outside the classroom. And, and, you know, instead of just studying and then playing games on your phone, it's what are you doing constructive with your time? I think we're, we're a little bit more um, directive in, in admissions. Um, so, um, while we take a look at um, what clubs and activities the students have been involved in, it's not as much a part of the admit, uh, admissions process as a four-year school. 
Um, and then one thing that I uh, personally had a question on was, um, I know with Adelphi you had uh, mentioned the joint degree programs, um, and I was just wondering if there was any difference in the application process if, if a student was interested in that particular, one of those particular programs. Yes, it's a great question, uh, and, and we do have different requirements. Um, for, for the like two-thirds of our, our joint degree programs that are early assurance, um, most of those have gone test optional in some capacity for this year as well. Um, what some of them are doing is kind of delaying the, the time frame, so you're allowed to kind of apply into your first year and then actually take the SATs during your freshman year of college. Um, the reason that they're still requiring tests, though, is because it's waiving a future test like an MCAT. Um, so it, it's challenging to, to waive all tests altogether when there's certain criteria they're looking for. Um, but typically, you know, if, if you're going to be promised a program in graduate school beyond just college, they are looking for a very high achieving student. So at minimum, we're looking for that 3.5 GPA, preferably a student with in the 90s of a GPA. Um, SATs, they're usually looking for a 13.50 or higher. Um, and some of the, the law program is actually uh, in the 1200, but the, it varies by program. And that's true for other schools too. Uh, anything this particular, an agreement between two schools, they're usually looking for a very particular student, and those are the perfect questions to reach out to your enrollment counselors, your admissions counselors about, and ask them, what are those requirements? Because uh, trust me, they're ready for that question. They know it's going to come up, and they're happy to talk you through it. Um, so I think that is actually all the questions that I had. Um, if anybody has any last minute questions um, that they would like to add, I want to just throw it out there one more time. I'm more than welcome to answer any questions that you have. And I wanted to take a second just to, again, thank Michael and Jill for participating this evening and for joining us um, and walking us kind of through the different application processes for both of your schools um, and telling us a little bit thank about what so makes Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, then this while, was fun. Okay. <laughs> and then while I have uh, your guys' attention as well, I just wanted to, um, you know, encourage everyone to please check our website at www.levittownpl.org. We are constantly posting new college access programs. Um, we have two new series of programs coming up, which will be our college major exploration. Um, and then we have a Meet the Professionals program as well, um, where you'll be able to meet uh, various professionals in the field where they'll be talking about specific careers um, and uh, different alumni and uh, professors from different colleges where they'll be talking about specific programs within certain colleges. So I would like to say thank you again to everyone and I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. <laughs>